Hello and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and a puzzle that's already been recommended to us a few times although it's only a, I think it was released on the 12th of February so it's pretty much brand new and it has the accolade of a 100% approval rating over on Logic Masters Germany and a rating that high is not easily won let me tell you and it's by Zeta Math. Now, Zetamath has appeared on the channel twice before, but um, Mark has done those videos. So this is my first time attempting a Zetamath puzzle. So um, I'm looking forward to it, and I'll read you the quite interesting rule set in just a moment. A uh, quick reminder that on Sunday, we released two amazing things over on Patreon. Uh, we released Scott Strosal's Sudoku Challenge, um, which incredible numbers of you have already solved given I mean I've tried it and it's really quite a difficult challenge I will say that um, so fantastic solving to all those of you who've managed to make your way through it and we've been delighted by the feedback as well so well done and I hope more of you will give it a try and of course the other thing we did was we we released Tantan Dai's talk through of how to solve Glum Hippo's um, average, allo, arrow, average arrows puzzle. I've got to put my uh, tongue and teeth back in today. Um, and that's definitely worth watching. And if you haven't watched the video about Tantan Dai's speed solving on the main channel, please do it. That video's only got 30,000 views at the moment. And I've looked at, <laughs> I've been looking at videos today that have millions and millions of views that in my view, um, you know, I'm not saying they don't deserve it, but Tantan's, Tantan's video definitely deserves more than 30,000 views. Uh, it is truly amazing. Um, now, let's get on to Zeta Maths puzzle, and let me read you the rules of this one. Quite interesting. In fact, I've got, um, what have I got? I've got examples to show you, which I think will help to clarify what these rules mean. So basically, normal Sudoku rules apply. What we've got here on the left is an example uh, of a correct grid, not the correct grid to the actual puzzle we're going to do, I'll hasten to add. That would be a bit silly, but no, this is an example of what a correct grid might look like. And then on the right, we've got examples of how the various rules are broken. So let's let's concentrate on the left-hand grid to start with. And what we have to do, what we're tasked with is, well, normal Sudoku rules apply. To complete the puzzle, you must shade some squares. Now the grid, um, the puzzle is called black and white, but I think it could just as easily be called grey and green, or you know, shaded and unshaded. Um, now our shading must satisfy all of the following rules. All shaded squares are orthogonally connected. So looking at the example grid here, you can see that we can trace a line through all of the grey cells. They are indeed orthogonally connected. No 2x2 two two region is entirely shaded or unshaded. Again, you can see that basically all of the shapes created, are, they're broadly snake-like. They can branch, but they definitely can't be 2x2 two two, uh, in shape. Um, no group of unshaded cells is enclosed by shaded cells. No group of unshaded cells, that's green ones, are enclosed by the shaded. Yeah, okay, well, another way of saying this rule is that the, the green cells have to connect orthogonally to the edge of the grid. Because if, they, if they're obviously, if they're enclosed, they couldn't do that. So basically that's another way of thinking about that if you want a different way of visualizing it. The numbers on the rows and columns indicate the sum of the shaded cells in that row or column. Oh, I see, right, so look at, yeah, look at this 18 clue here. 3 plus 9 plus 6 is 18. So these cells outside of the grid are telling us the sum of the shaded cells in the row or column. Let's do another one. Oh, oh I thought the 23 clue was broken then because I didn't see that this 3 is indeed shaded. Yeah, but 9 plus 6 plus 5 plus 3 does equal 23. Right, so I understand that. Um, all circled cells are shaded. They are indeed. Okay. Um, the digit in a circle matches the number of shaded cells within that box, counting itself. Oh, I see. Right, so look at the seven here. That is saying that within that box there are seven shaded cells, and indeed there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Within this box there are five shaded cells. One, two, three, four, five three in that one, etc. Right, let's have a look at this diagram on the right and see how, see how this is breaking the rules. So, 
Right, I can see how this four is breaking the rules because there are definitely not four shaded cells in this box. There are in fact six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this should be a six, I think. The five, why is that broken? Oh, it's not shaded. All of the, all of the circles are shaded. So that's why that one's got a, a red X. The 18, yeah, 9 plus 4 plus 3, here's a knowledge bomb for you. It doesn't add to 18, so that's why that one, that row's broken. This is a 2 by 2 area of grey, that's got a big X. This is a 2 by 2 area of green, that's got a big X. Ah, and this one, the greens here, the unshaded, are enclosed by the greys, and they can't connect to the edge of the grid as a result. So, that is the set of rules. How interesting, it's like a mashup between Sudoku and the logic problem Corral, if you've ever played that. Um, anyway, do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video. Now I get to play, let's get cracking, and how are we going to get cracking? Well, my eyes are drawn immediately to this row, because that's got a 44, which means almost the entire row is shaded. And how do I know that? Well, let me let you in on a little secret. A complete row of a Sudoku, if we look at the finished solution, will obviously contain all of the digits 1 to 9. Add up the digits 1 to 9, you get 45. So I know that this row in total adds to 45. Now if the shaded cells add up to 44, there must be exactly one cell that's not shaded, and it must contain a 1. And that is useful why? Um, I don't know. I did a puzzle a bit like this yesterday with the some snake stuff going on. In fact, we've got a few quite high totals. We've got a 44 here, a 43 there, 40 here, nothing quite as large in the columns. Oh, I know what I should do. I should shade. I should shade in the cells, shouldn't I? That are in circles. Sorry, that's that's just an easy gimme. Let's do that and see if that reveals what we're meant to do next. So I will use purple for shading, and green for unshading, as is my want of late. Um, so what's this doing? So the seven clue. Ah, yeah, I can green in a lot of this column because I definitely know there's two shaded cells in this column. And how many, what's the maximum number of shaded cells there could be in this column? Well, it's three, because seven could be one plus two plus four. But if it is one plus two plus four, the cells that will be shaded are those three. So it's either just these two that are shaded, or it's those three that are shaded. Either way, the rest of the column is not shaded. So we can put some green straight in. Now, well now, ah, yeah, okay, now we can do more with the seven clue. This is very nice actually, because look at the arrangement of the shaded cells in boxes two and eight. Now, if this seven clue was a three cell clue, one of these would have to be a one. And if one of these is a one, let's just think about whether this could be a one. If this is a one, that's saying there is one shaded cell in the box, so the rest of these cells would be green. Now, unfortunately, this island of purple we've created is against the rules. All of the purples have to be friendly. They have to, they have to um, be orthogonally connected, and that's going to not be the case. So you, you can't actually put a 1, um, sorry, we can't put a 1. Ah, and if we can't put a 1 in a purple, well, we can't put, let's be precise, we can't put 1s in these purples. This, this must be a 2 cell total to 7 that doesn't include a 1 or a 4, it's 2 and 5. That's really, that's a lovely way to begin. So one of these purples now, this is actually constraining because whichever one of these is a two will 
has to get to the edge of its box. So it's going to either be, if this was a two, it'll be this one or this one. If this was a two, it'll be this one or this one. But the rest of that box will have to be green. Oh, I see. Ah, now we use the 43 clue. Because the 43 clue is telling us that somewhere in this row, there is a green two. Because obviously 45 minus 43 is two. We can't make two in two cells. We must make two in one cell. So somewhere there's a green two. Well, if there's a green two looking at this square, this purple square, that's got to be a five. So that's a two. So this one is the one that has to, to connect with its friends. It's either got to have a purple here or a purple here. So the rest of the box is green. I like this so far. This is definitely interesting. Um, now don't, ah, now look, that is nearly a two by two area of, um, oh no, hang on, I can do this easy, more easily. I was about to say these two squares have to be purple and they do have to be purple, but there's a simpler way of realizing this and that's to look at the 44 clue again because the 44 clue is telling us there is one green cell in this row um, and that's that one. So the rest of the row is in fact purple. And that's a one. Oh, and now I've, I, instead of doing two by twos on greens, I do it on purples. That cut must be green, that must be green, that must be green, that must be green, that must be green, and that must be green. Norry, norry. Um, now, oh, the four's green now, because we know that the two and the five are what's adding up to seven. Uh, okay, what do we do next? We could, I'm not sure. Um, uh, where do we look now? <laughs> We've got, I've got to put a two, a green two somewhere in there. I've got, ah, the 40 clue. Right, well we know the 40 clue is not, it's not made up of eight purple cells. How do I know that? Well, if it was eight purple cells and all those were purple, this cell would have to be a five because it would have to be equal to 45 minus 40. Well, it can't be a five. So, so this row has seven purples in it seven purples in this row. So this square, yeah, okay, so the, the two cells that are green in this row add to five. So this square can only be a three because it can't be a one, two, or four. And that's, the, the, so the only digits that are available that are below five that we could use are one, two, three, and four, and this can only be three. So there is now a two in this row as well, another there's a green two in this row and a green two in this row that we need to find. And we've got ah, uh, we've got a thirteen clue here, but we've already got four purples in both of these. Ah, that's in, yeah. Hang on, we've already got four purples in both of these boxes. But none of these circles can actually be a four because of the four here. So the minimum you can put into those squares is five. Oh, now, now I can use the 40 clue. This is really clever stuff. Right, so let's look at the 40 clue, which we now know has seven purples. And let's try, let's try and keep um, as many purples as we can out of this these three cells here. So how could we how could we make these three cells contain the minimum number of purples we can? Well, we could put a purple there, a purple there, a purple there, purple there, purple there. So we could put five purples in the row without getting to these three cells. But we know that there are seven purples in the row, so there must be two purples here in these three cells at least. So this one, two, three four, five, six, there must be at least, that must be at least six. And I think, I think that's gonna be the same there. Let's just double check it, it looks like it is anyway. 
because now let's pack yeah one two three four five is the maximum I can keep out of out of this box here so we've still got two purples I've got to put in the row that takes this one one two three four five six that takes that one to six as well but they can't they can't both be that's lovely they can't both be six because if they're both six you've got you've broken Sudoku but they have to be at least six so this must be a six seven pair that's the only way we can make 13 the rest of the row must be green and so now one of these is a six which means it will have two purples in it one of these is a seven which means it'll have three more purples in it there are seven purples all, all together in the row so those two must be purple ah now 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 i'm going to use connectivity look oh uh, this is i love this puzzle look now we've got a two here what's that telling us well it's telling us something let's put it the obvious way first Either this cell or this cell is purple. But the crucial thing is that both of them are not purple. So this little alleyway here is a dead end. Whichever way, whichever way the purple goes, this side of the grid and this side of the grid are kept apart through this junction. They can't connect to each other through here. It's impossible. So how does this sort of sideways cross and this whatever that is how do they connect to the rest of the purples in the grid given they can't connect through here they must connect downwards so this square must be purple and this square must be purple and that actually is useless but it was quite interesting um, Oh dear okay so oh maybe I can do the thing I did with the sixes and the sevens with the eight then because the 43 clue we know that this is an eight cell clue eight eight purple cells so if I pack the purples to the right that would be six purples there so there's got to be two purples here minimum ah ah that's really that's interesting if you only put two purples in these three squares you can't get the eight to the edge of the the box this purple this purple eight in the corner needs to connect to the rest of its friends and it can't do that with just two purples here there has to be another one somewhere it's either three purples here or it's it's a purple here that connects there or it's more purples this way but this cannot just be this cannot just be a three I think that's what I'm concluding this if this is just three because of the two purples contributed by the 43 clue this eight is stranded so this is at least four now we might be able to do the same down here oh no this one's closer to the edge of its box so this won't work as well um, so we can pack six purples into the left yeah okay and then we can we can with two purples in the 43 clue that would be enough to get this purple out so there must be at least two purples in these three squares and therefore this doesn't have to oh but look actually this has to be at least three and it can't be four. It can't be four because if it's four, what are you going to put in that one? You've got to put, you can't put four in again by Sudoku and anything larger breaks the eight total. So this can't, this has to be three. That's huge. That's huge. Well, we now know this is four or five. Um, we don't know which. It's, if it's four, we've got to put a one somewhere in the row. If it's five, happy days but we do know exact well not exactly but we do know approximately where the two purples go in this string oh no not where the two purples go in this string where the two purples go in this box we know they're in this string of 
three cells. So the rest of this box is green. And oh, this is lovely. Now this purple has to meet its friends. So we actually know that those two have to be the purple and that must be green. And therefore we've got to continue. That's got to be purple because we need the purples to meet their friends. This, we've now made a little cul-de-sac here, look. This, we know that the purple up here in the top left of, right of the grid is connecting to its friends via this connection. So it's got to keep going, it's got to keep going. Okay, we might not be able to go further than that, but that was quite... The, oh, the 20... Oh, I thought I'd broken the puzzle. I haven't broken it. The 29 clue. That must be at least four purples. Well, I've got one. Well, there's only room for another three. So that the, all of these must be purple. And we know the values in them. So they must be five, seven, eight, nine. This purple has to continue to meet its friends. In fact, this row is done, isn't it? Sorry, the 43 row, if I thought about it. The moment you get the green in it, you know what's going on. This is a two. This must be green to prevent the two by two. We've now got four in here. And we, oh, we, we need five. This is lovely. There's a 24 clue. Well, 24, what's the minimum number of purple cells we need to make 24? It's three. At the moment, I've only got one. I can put another one here, but that means there must be at least one purple in here. But there can, actually there can't be more than one purple because we can't, this can't be a six or these two squares will add up to nine. So this is five. One of these squares is purple. In order to make the 24 clue work, that is purple. That's green because we must avoid a two by two of purple. That's green. One of these is purple. Um, both of these are now green because of the 8 clue and the 5 clue actually and suddenly it's looking a little bit better isn't it so still ah there must be a 2 in one of those squares from the 40 clue we know there's one of these is green in fact exactly one of these is green so exactly one of these is purple So the purple connection is, the purple is not connecting to these purples via this cell because because this one of these is green, this purple is stopping. So the purple is either coming up like that or it's joining here. I'm not sure how we do that. We do know that this 24 is a 789 triple though because we can only put one more purple in the row. We've got, uh, we don't know about the 38 clue, although that is quite a high total, but we've already got quite a few purples in the column. The 21 clue, mm. uh, this is getting tricky now. Um, Ooh, the 15, the 15 is, yes. This can't be purple now. If that's purple, look at this column. We'd have one, two, three, four cells there. What's the minimum I could make these orange cells add up to? Well, it would be 10 if I put one, two, three, and four in them, which I actually can't do. I can see that from box five, but imagine I could. One plus two plus three plus four plus seven is a minimum of 17, and this clue needs to be 15. So this square cannot be purple and must be green and that means this has to come out this way it has to connect to its friends this now the only way this domino connects to the rest of its friends is via this cell so that's purple avoid a two by two um, now do we know the value of this one? Oh, this is to do with a nine clue on the left um, Ah, 
Ah, but I've got a 28 clue here, which has only got three purples in it. You can't make 28 in three, so at least one of these must be purple. And if at least one of them is purple, this one's purple, because we can't just make that purple, or it will not have any friends, and it will be mateless, and that would be sad. So this must be purple, and this may be purple. And therefore, this clue is a minimum of five and a maximum of six. So it's either a five or a six. This clue, it sees two, but it must see another purple somewhere because if there's no, no more purples in box one, that would be a two by two green region and that's not gonna work. So this is at least three, ah, but it could be four. Okay. Um, Right, so now we have to put our thinking caps on, I think. How do we get how do we get this figured out? That's the question. So one question is, is this a one? That's the only way that this can be a three cell clue. So if that's a one, what's wrong with it? It's, oh, no, that doesn't work. Okay, that's very easy to disprove. Sorry, let's think about whether this is a purple one. Right, it's not a purple one, why not? Well, if it's a purple one, I've still not managed to disturb the fact that this is a two by two green region. So there must be another purple in this box somewhere, which means this square must be a four. But one plus four plus five is not equal to nine. There is another knowledge bomb from cracking the cryptic. Don't tell me I don't give you knowledge bombs. So this is definitely green which means these two add up to nine. That might actually not be as helpful as I was hoping. Um, well, okay, if this can only be a four at maximum, that square can never be can never be purple because I can't reach the rest of the purples from there. So that's green. And maybe I can get a count on the 38 clue now. Can I do that? I know it's got at least two cells be helpful if I knew that. How do I... Oh, look, I can know that. There's a... This is seven, because it's done, and I just didn't spot it. That's seven. That means those are not seven. There's a seven up here. There's a seven... The seven is not here, because we know there's a seven, eight, nine, triple in row seven somewhere. There's a seven down in one of those two cells. This is a six. Oh, okay. Um, I don't. I think we actually already knew that because I knew that this domino was one green and one purple. I just hadn't filled it in. I don't think it. Well, does it matter if this? Yeah, it matters a little bit actually because you can't make those two squares a three-four pair because that will break this square. So if this is a two-cell total adding up to seven. It can't be one, six, two, five, or three, four now, so it's not possible, which means it must be a three cell total adding up to seven. But we don't know which of those squares is the extra square, so we know that these are one, two, and four. And either this or this is the extra cell. Now, do we know how to do that? This is tricky, actually. <laughs> um, do we know how to do that? That's the question. We know these add up to nine. At the moment, I've got one, two, three, f I've got five there, six, seven. 
I've got two more purples to play with. Maximum. So, how do I know how this goes then? Oh, okay. Well, I must avoid this being a 2x2. Two two. I must do that. So it's absolutely essential that's purple. So now I've got one more purple to place. Ah, ah, the 17 clue. I've only got one purple in, in the top row at the moment. This must be at least two. I can't just put 17 in that square. So there must be another purple in one of those three. And that's my last purple. So this square cannot be purple and has to be green. And now look, these must be a one, two, four triple because we know we're looking for three cells that add to seven. Those are the three cells. That must be now purple. Don't allow a two by two. Oh, it's still ambiguous as to which way that one goes. This is now a seven, eight or a nine. The one, two, four. Oh, this is gorgeous. The one, two, four. Fix that square as a three. And once this is a three, that must be a six. And now we know those two are also green. That's beautiful. And this square must be purple. And this, these two are now... Um, oh, whoopsie. I didn't mean to do that. What I want to do is to make those two squares an eight, nine pair. And that means this square is the seven. And we've, we're closing in on finishing the shading part of the puzzle, aren't we? That's not two by Sudoku. This 38 clue, there's two green cells in row two that add up to seven. So that's a three or a six. Oh, Sudoku on threes. Let Sudoku be your friend. That's a three, that's a six, that's a one. Um, come on, Sudoku, keep working in my... Th oh, look, I've got 38 in the in the greens. Sorry, I've got 7 in the greens in this column. I can't use 1, 6 or 3, 4. These are 2, 5, and there's a 2 here. So this is 5, this is 2. That gives me the 2 and the 4 up there. There's, a, there's now a naked... This is a naked single because it sees a 1 and a 5. Um, so this has got to be a 4 and this has got to be a 1-5 pair. And we know the order because there's a 5-8-9 triple in column 9. So this is a 1, this is a 5. 1 is in one of those two cells by Sudoku. Um, this column, look, ah, oh, this is interesting. This column has not got one, eight, or nine in it yet. Well, that can only, can't be a one. So that's an eight or a nine, and that gives another triple in this box now, five, eight, and nine. So this square has to be one, eight, or nine, and it can't be eight or nine. That's a one, I think. So there's a one in one of those two cells. This square's an eight or a nine. which means by Sudoku, where do we put the three in box six? Only there. So these squares are two. F f these squares are two, four, and six. There's a four and a six in the row, so that's a two. This is a four, six pair. Now, one of those two squares is a two by Sudoku. Purple squares in column 7 are interesting because we've got 13 definitely in these squares. So we need 15 more with an 8 or a 9 in one of them. So this square is a 7 or a, uh, it's a, seven or a 6. Well, it can't be a 6 because there's already a 6 in the column. So that's 7. That's 8. That's 9. 9 goes here by Sudoku. 8 goes here by Sudoku. And we are cooking with gas today. Um... Three. Three must be in one of those two cells. I don't actually feel like I've necessarily used all of the um, the obvious clues yet either. 
let's let's do a stock take this column needs four and six into those squares and it needs one and nine into those squares well we know the order because there's a nine seven eight nine triple here so that's one that's nine So we did the 8 clue, we've done the 43, we've done the 24, we've not done the... F oh, still haven't disambiguated the 40. How do you do that? Ah, I know how to do that. There's a 30 clue now with a 3 in it. So if there was no more purple squares in column 3, we'd have to make 4 cells add up to 30 with a one of those squares being a 3, which would mean we would need 3 9s. That will not work. So this square must be purple and therefore is not 2. And therefore that's green. And that means what? I don't know. That means there's a 2 in one of these two cells, I think. Okay, well, let's go back to it. So we've got, now I have got the 40, the 13 we did ages ago, the 44 we did ages ago. The, no. Yeah, that's all fixed, I think. The 38, yeah, we did that. The 21, that looks very difficult to do, although I can see that can't be a 3 because I couldn't make those two squares add up to 18. So we actually get another digit here. This is a 3. These three squares are 7, 8, and 9. There's a 7, 8 there, so that's a 9. This has got to be a 7 or an 8, I think. Um, 30 clue, another 30 clue, a 7 clue, a 15 clue. I thought I looked at this. I think I looked at this earlier. This can't be a 9. Look, if that's a 9, you have to put a 1, 2, or a 3 in here because these three squares would have to add up to 6. So that doesn't work. We can get. Ah, that gives us the 9 in row, row 7. It's got to be here. This is not 9. If it's 8. Oh no, 8 won't work either because then these three squares, these orange squares, would have to add up to 7. They'd have to be 1, 2, and 4. And I can't put 2 in both of those squares. That will not work. And the one and the four aren't available, obviously. So this is seven. That means that's seven, that's eight. These three squares have got to add up to eight, which means one of them must be a one, and it's not those two, so that's a one. One goes into one of those squares. These two squares have got, well, they can't be three and four, so they've got to be two and five. And the 2 therefore goes here, and the 5 goes here, and the 5 goes here, and the 8 goes here. This is now a 1-5 pair. This, this, these two squares are an 8-9 pair. These two squares are a 6-7 pair. And we know the order. We've got a 7 here. So 7, 6, 6, 4. This square should be a 9, and it does look like it's working. 9 goes in at the top of the grid into one of two places. These two squares have got to be 8 and eight and 4. Well, that looks right, but it's not exactly disambiguating anything, is it? Um, these squares here are 3, 4 and 6. Again, I can't quite see how to do that. That's not 6, though, so there's definitely a 6 in this domino. no three in this domino or no three in this cell okay so now let's check again what have we got now ah, now now maybe the 30 clue because I know those two squares have got to add up to eight so I can't put four into this one because then I will need four into this one so this is three this is five these two squares are eight and nine we know the order that gives us the eight and the four gives us a six here I think that should be a four wow okay so this is now done sorry I'm just trying to see if I can see a quick efficient way to do this I'm not spotting anything at the moment have I, have I done all the purples I have I've done all the purple, so this just should just now be our old friend Sudoku. Let's try and do Sudoku. That's a three. That's a one. 
um, two, three, five, six, one. That's annoying. So four look has to be in one of those two squares. This box needs five, six, and seven. Ah, this square can only be a seven of those. Look, that means that's the six, that's the five. That fixes the five and the one and the one down there. This column needs what? Does it need a three? I think. I think that's the is that the last three? Two, three. Yes, it is. Okay. Now this. What does this column need? Two and seven. We can do that as well. Seven and two. Now this is a two by Sudoku. We still need four, six, and eight down here. So somewhat oddly that doesn't seem to be resolved that can't be six that can't be four this square here is a four or a six that's fine ah it's in fact it's very fine because of that four there so we get four four six six eight nine eight sorry i only just spotted the nine there and i think we're nearly there so we need seven and nine which is that way round and those two squares have got to be four and eight, which is this way round. And what a beautiful puzzle. I think it's gonna be correct, I'll click tick. Yeah, that seems to like it. Now let's just do a brief check that we've added up the numbers. This needs outies of seven, it has. Adds to nine, that looks okay. Yep, yep. Outies of five, innies of 24, outie of two, innies of eight. 21, ah, oh, 21, yeah, that looks fine. I mean, if I find a mistake in editing, I'll obviously put a card up, but I think it felt like a logical solution, didn't it? It's a beautiful puzzle. I have to say, I really enjoyed that. And thanks very much to those of you who took the trouble to recommend it. I do appreciate that because it's often, um, well, you know, we are, we endeavor to provide every day absolutely top world-class puzzles and this is yet another thank you so much for watching zeta math really enjoyed it and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic <laughs>